President Trump is taking the airwaves tomorrow night and then heading south to make his case for a wall on the southern border. At midnight tonight, this will become the second longest shutdown in history. So where do negotiations stand and what to expect with the newly seated Democratic-controlled House? Here with, us, here with his take, that is, is Congressman Mike Quigley. He's a Democrat from Illinois' 5th Congressional District, which includes parts of Chicago and sections of Cook and DuPage counties. We invited the area's only Republican left in Congress, Adam Kinzinger, but he was unable to join us tonight. We hope to have him on very soon. Congressman Quigley, thank you for joining us. And first, let's start with the shutdown at midnight. As I mentioned, it's going to be the second longest. Uh, government shutdown in history. Where do things stand in terms of negotiations? Last week, the House passed a bill to reopen the government. There are 12 bills that fund the government. Uh, seven of them have not been passed. We passed all seven. This week, we're going to try again. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, we begin the process of passing them one at a time, uh, beginning Wednesday with the bill I'll be uh, leading through the House to fund the financial services general government part of government which includes the IRS. So, uh, you're, the House Democrats are taking this action, but Mitch McConnell is the key actor in all this. Uh, summarize what he's been doing from your perspective. Uh, this is, we are taking bills that the Senate passed just recently. These are bills that Mitch McConnell's Republican leadership wrote. So what we're doing is taking the Senate bills and saying, all right, we're gonna pass the same ones in the House. How can you object to them? You approve them? You wrote them, and you pass them. Now, unfortunately, they're saying we're not going to take those matters up. There is a bipartisan, bicameral solution to this. We funded the government that way in 2018. We had a deal in 2019, but apparently at the, the last hour, when senators were actually going home, the president saw something he didn't like on TV, and he said, uh, I'm not going to sign the bill. Well, so they... Uh while these legislative steps are being taken, what's going on behind the scenes? There must be something. There's a lot of frustration because there but isn't... I mean, is there any communication behind the scenes? I, I don't think so. And I, I think the problem is that uh, we're stuck with a, a president who has made his mind up. He wants $5 billion for a wall, and there's no other negotiations. I don't see a lot of it taking place. And what I hear from the leadership on the House side is it's, it's pretty limited. Uh, unfortunately, when one side decides that they're not going to compromise, this job gets a lot more difficult. There are a lot of issues that any member of Congress could say, this is uh, a must-do. I could say the same thing about election security, because we know the Russians attacked our democratic process, and they want to do it again. I could say the same thing about climate change, which could, could cause insecurity here and around the world. But we have to act like adults. Be willing to compromise and move forward. Speaking of the wall, uh, President Trump and his administration is saying that there is a national emergency at the border and building a wall is the answer. What is your response to that? Uh, apprehensions are at a 10-year low. Um, I was in the southern border, at the southern border, in the middle of October of just this last year. Uh, I met with our national experts on this issue, and almost none of the discussion involved a, war, a wall. The discussion involved radars, sensors, uh, drones, cameras, uh, roads that run parallel to the wall, boats on the Rio Grande. In other words, solutions for a 21st century issue of border security, not a 13th century. And in terms of uh, some people are saying that the wall, uh, that the president recently has been saying, and at least according to some reports, that when he means wall, it doesn't necessarily mean a concrete wall. It could mean a virtual wall with some of these other, uh, with some of these other features that you just alluded to. Uh, what is your take on that? Uh, that solution we had last year. We approved about $1.6 billion for border security, of which the administration has spent around 6%. They couldn't spend $5 billion a year if they really, really wanted to. If what they're telling us is that they want border security, we're all there. Uh, I believe that the Democratic House would approve this continuation of this funds, as they did again last week. Do just that. Put cameras up, put sensors up, radar, drones, and the like. That's the solution to border security. A wall is speaking to the president's base. 
Let's get back to the issue of the, uh, of the shutdown and the employees. There are 800,000 federal employees who are affected by this. Uh, just give us a brief su su a summary of what groups of employees fall into this number. Well, there are about 420,000 that are being forced to work without pay. That's unacceptable. Including? It, well, we're talking about TSA agents at O'Hare. We're talking about people dealing with law enforcement agency, agencies like FBI agents and the like. This addresses national security. The tragic irony here is the president's talking about building a wall as a national security issue and the manner in which he's going at it, shutting down at least six of the seven for no apparent reason, is actually putting us at greater risk. We're talking about food inspections. Uh, these are the things that keep us safe on a day-to-day -day basis. Right now, in terms of the uh, average citizen maybe who's not traveling, what kinds of things are, are being impacted? For example, can, can one take out mortgages right now, and can those be processed? They cannot be. Uh, your IRS, uh, when you fill out your IRS um, forms and seek a, a refund, that is going to be slowed, if not completely halted. The although SBA the, is there was, uh, there was an announcement that, uh, that the administration was going to call back some furloughed IRS employees so that tax refunds could go out. I, I don't know how you bring back a few and address that massive task at hand. Particularly, we have a new tax law in place, extraordinarily complicated, and there's no one there to answer the phone when you have questions about this. So bringing back a few won't solve that solution. In the meantime, SBA loans are halted, nutrition assistance is, is facing, farm assistant programs are going to run out, and if this goes on much longer, that list will get longer. Right now, there are already reports of TSA workers calling in sick. Uh, at what point will air traffic be seriously disrupted? Well, we heard the pilots say today that they believe that flight safety is beginning to become a risk factor. Uh, with each passing day when people are asked to be to work without getting paid, we would anticipate that the number of people who take that option and don't show up to work will grow. That will affect travel, it will affect the economy, but most important, it will affect flight safety. At this point, are air traffic controllers affected? No, uh, not at this point. Remember, we have 12 bills that fund this government. Uh, there are seven of them right now that... Uh, have not been approved by Congress. Back to the issue of the relationship between the House and the Senate, specifically Mitch McConnell, one of the things he's saying is that it's pointless to forward legislation to the president when he's already said he's going to veto it. Does that make sense? It makes sense only if you assume that the president has to get his way. At some point in time, the idea is to pressure the senators to uh, pass this legislation, legislation they already passed last year. So I, I don't know what else to do when you have a petulant president who simply uh, takes his ball and goes home. If the idea is to, okay, we have to compromise with someone who's acting like this, we're going to be spending $5 billion on a wall that simply doesn't work. So the alternative to what uh, the Senate leader is talking about makes absolutely less sense. Let's talk about some other hot-button issues. You're on the House Intelligence Committee.